Life is a dream, Spanish. La vida es sueño, la beta y es sueño, is a Spanish language play by Pedro Calderón de la Barca. First published in 1636, in two different editions, the first in Madrid and a second one in Zaragoza. Don W. Cruikshank and a number of other critics believe that the play can be dated around 1630, thus making Calderón's most famous work a rather early composition. 1. It is a philosophical allegory regarding the human situation and the mystery of life. 2. The play has been described as the supreme example of Spanish Golden Age drama. 3. The story focuses on the fictional Segismundo, Prince of Poland, who has been imprisoned in a tower by his father, King Basilio, following a dire prophecy that the prince would bring disaster to the country and death to the king. Basilio briefly frees Segismundo, but when the prince goes on a rampage, the king imprisons him again, persuading him that it was all a dream. Pedro Calderón de la Barca, the 17th of January 1600 to the 25th of May 1681, UK. Calderón de la Barca, US. Calderón de L, de L, Spanish. Pedro Calderón de la Barca, full name. Pedro Calderón de la Barca y Barreda González de Hainau Ruiz de Blasco y Riaño was a Spanish dramatist, poet, and writer. He is known as one of the most distinguished poets and writers of the Spanish Golden Age, especially for the many verse dramas he wrote for the theater. Calderón has been termed the Spanish Shakespeare, one the national poet of Spain, and one of the greatest poets and playwrights in the history of world literature. A. Calderón de la Barca was born into the minor Spanish nobility in Madrid, where he lived for most of his life. He served as soldier and a knight of the military and religious order of Santiago, but later became a Roman Catholic priest. His theatrical debut was a history play about the life of King Edward III of England, was first performed on 29 June 1623 at the Royal Alcazar of Madrid, during the surprise visit to Spain of Charles, Prince of Wales to negotiate for a dynastic marriage alliance with the Spanish Habsburgs. As he continued writing verse dramas, Calderón's favorite theatrical genres included mystery plays illustrating the doctrines of transubstantiation and the real presence for performance during the Feast of Corpus Christi and both comedy of intrigue and tragic theater rooted in many of the same plot devices as Shakespeare's plays and in ethical dilemmas under the Spanish nobility's code of honor. Born while the unwritten rules of Spanish Golden Age theater were still being defined by Lope de Vega, Calderón pushed their limits even further by introducing radical and pioneering innovations that are now termed metafiction and surrealism. His masterpiece, La Vida es Sueño, Life is a Dream, combines a beauty and the beast plotline, a disguised woman reminiscent of Viola from Shakespeare's Twelfth Night, surrealist concepts, romantic complications, and the threat of a dynastic civil war, while exploring the philosophical question of whether each individual's fate has already been written without their involvement or if the future can be altered by free will. Calderón's poetry and plays have since wielded an enormous global influence upon Romanticism, Symbolism, Literary Modernism, Expressionism, Dystopian Science Fiction, and even Postmodernism. His many admirers have included August Wilhelm Schlegel, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, John Dryden, Lord Byron, Percy Bysshe Shelley, Father Felix Sarda y Salvini, Hugo von Hofmannsthal, Vyacheslav Ivanov, Jorge Luis Borges, Konstantin Stanislavski, and Boris Pasternak. In 1881, the Royal Spanish Academy awarded a gold medal to Irish poet Dennis Florence McCarthy for his highly praised and accurate literary translations of Calderón's verse dramas into English. In 2021, a renewed search for Calderón's missing remains gained media attention worldwide. 3. The play's central themes are the conflict between free will and fate, as well as restoring one's honor. It remains one of Calderón's best-known and most-studied works, and was listed as one of the 40 greatest plays of all time in The Independent. Four other themes include dreams versus reality and the conflict between father and son. The play has been adapted for other stage works, in film and as a novel. Catholic Spain was the most powerful European nation by the 16th century. 5. The Spanish Armada was defeated by England in 1588. However, while Spain was trying to defend the northern coast of Africa from the expansion of the Turkish Ottoman Empire, six and the gold and silver that Spain took from its possessions in the New World were not adequate to sustain its subsequent decades of heavy military expenses. Spain's power was rapidly waning by the time Calderón wrote Life is a Dream. 7. 8. The age of Calderón was also marked by deep religious conviction in Spain. 9. The Catholic Church had fostered Spanish pride and identity, to the extent that, speaking Christian, became, and remains, synonymous with speaking Spanish. 10. 
Another current that permeated Spanish thinking was the departure from the idea that royal power resided in God's will, as noted in Machiavelli's The Prince, 1532. Francisco Suarez's treatise on the defense of faith, De Defensio Fidei, 1613, stated that political power resided in the people and rejected the divine rights of kings. 11. And Juan Mariana's On King and Kingship, 1599, went even further by stating that the people had the right to murder despotic kings. 12. Page needed. Amidst these developments during the 16th and 17th centuries, Spain experienced a cultural blossoming referred to as the Spanish Golden Age. 1314, it saw the birth of notable works of art. Don Quixote, by Miguel de Cervantes, 1605, played with the vague line between reality and perception. 15, Lope de Vega, in his play Fuente Ovjuna, 1619, talks about a village that rebels against authority. Summary After being abandoned by their horses, Rosora, who is dressed as a man, and Claren walk through the mountains of Poland without food or anywhere to go for the night. They arrive at a tower, where they find Segismundo imprisoned, bound in chains. He tells them that his only crime was being born. Clotaldo, Segismundo's old warden and tutor, arrives and orders his guards to disarm and kill the intruders, but he recognizes Rosora's sword as his own that he had left behind in Muscovy for a favor that he owed years ago for his child to bear. Suspecting that Rosora is his child, he thinks she is male, he takes Rosora and Claren with him to court. At the palace, Astolfo, Duke of Muscovy, discusses with his cousin, Princess Estrella, Segismundo's cousin, that as they are the nephew and niece of King Basilio of Poland, they would be his successors if they married each other. Estrella is troubled by the locket that Astolfo wears, with another woman's portrait. Basilio reveals to them that he imprisoned his infant son, Segismundo. Due to a prophecy by an oracle that the prince would bring disgrace to Poland and would kill his father, but he wants to grant his son a chance to prove the oracle wrong. If he finds him evil and unworthy, he will send him back to his cell, making way for Astolfo and Estrella to become the new king and queen. Clotaldo enters with Rosora, telling Basilio that the intruders know about Segismundo. He begs for the king's pardon, as he knows he should have killed them. The king says he should not worry, for his secret has already been revealed. Rosora tells Clotaldo that she wants revenge against Astolfo, but she won't say why. Clotaldo is reluctant to reveal that he thinks he is Rosora's father. Act 2. Edit. Clotaldo gives Segismundo a sedative that robs one in his sleep of his sense and faculties, 109, which puts him in a sleep similar to death. In the royal palace of the capital city of Warsaw, Clotaldo has learned that Rosora is a woman, Claren explains that Rosora is Princess Estrella's maid but has been going by the name of Astria. When Segismundo is awakened and arrives at court, Clotaldo tells him that he is the prince of Poland and heir to the throne. He resents Clotaldo for keeping this secret from him for all those years. He finds Duke Astolfo irritating and is dazzled by Estrella's beauty. When a servant warns him about the princess's betrothal to Astolfo, Segismundo is enraged by the news and throws the servant from the balcony. Act 3. Edit. The people find out that they have a prince and many rebel, breaking him out of his prison tower, although at first they comically mistake Claren for the prince. Segismundo finds Clotaldo, who is afraid of his reaction. Segismundo forgives him, asking to join his cause, but Clotaldo refuses, swearing allegiance to the king. Back in the palace, everyone prepares for battle, and Clotaldo speaks with Rosora. She asks him to take Astolfo's life, as he had taken her honor before leaving her. Clotaldo refuses, reminding her that Duke Astolfo is now the heir to the throne. When Rosora asks what will be of her honor, Clotaldo suggests that she spend her days in a nunnery. Disheartened, Rosora runs away. As war nears, Segismundo sees Rosora, who tells him that she was the youth who found him in his prison and also the woman who he tried to seduce in court. She tells him that she was born in Muscovy of a noble woman who was disgraced and abandoned. She had the same fate falling in love with Astolfo and giving him her honor before he abandoned her to marry Estrella. She followed him to Poland for revenge, finding that Clotaldo is her father, but he is unwilling to fight for her honor. Rosora compares herself to female warriors Athena and Diana. She wants to join Segismundo's battle and to kill Astolfo or to die. Fighting. Segismundo agrees. While soldiers cheer for Segismundo, Rosora and Claren are reunited, and the king's soldiers approach. Segismundo's army is winning the battle. Basilio, Clotaldo and Astolfo are preparing to escape when Claren is killed in front of them. Segismundo arrives and Basilio faces his son, waiting for his death, but Segismundo spares his life. 
In light of the prince's generous attitude, the king proclaims Segismundo heir to his throne. As king, Segismundo decides that Astolfo must keep his promise to marry Rosora to preserve her honor. At first Astolfo is hesitant because she is not of noble birth, but when Clotaldo reveals that she is his daughter, Astolfo consents. Segismundo then claims Estrella in marriage himself. Segismundo resolves to live by the motto that, God is God, acknowledging that, whether asleep or awake, one must strive for goodness. Dreams versus Reality The concept of life as a dream is an ancient one found in Hinduism and Greek philosophy, notably Heraclitus and the famous Platonic allegory of the cave, and is directly related to Descartes' dream argument. It has been explored by writers from Lope de Vega to Shakespeare. 17 key elements from the play may be derived from the Christian legend of Barlaam and Husafat, which Lope de Vega had brought to the stage. 18 failed verification this legend is, itself, a derivation of the story of the early years of Siddhartha Gautama, which illustrates the Hindu-Buddhist concept of reality as illusion. 18. Father versus Son Conflict One of the major conflicts of the play is the opposition between king and prince, which parallels with the struggle of Uranus versus Saturn or Saturn versus Jupiter in classical mythology. 19. This struggle is a typical representation of the opposition in Baroque comedy between the values represented by a fatherly figure and those embodied by the son. 18. An opposition which, in this case, may have biographical elements. 20. Honor. The theme of honor is significant to the character Rosora. She feels she has been stripped of her honor, and her aim is to reclaim it. Rosora feels that both she and her mother were subjected to the same fate. She pleads to Clotaldo about earning her honor back, which he denies and sends her to a nunnery. Other motifs and themes. Motifs and themes derived from a number of traditions found in this drama include the labyrinth, the monster, free will versus predestination, the four elements, original sin, pride and disillusionment. The Rosora subplot has been subjected to much criticism in the past as not belonging to the work. Marcelino Menendez y Palayo saw it as a strange and exotic plot, like a parasitical vine. 25. Rosora has also been dismissed as the simple stock character of the jilted woman. With the British school of Calderonistas, this attitude changed. A. E. Sloman explained how the main and secondary actions are linked. 26. Others like E. M. Wilson and William M. Whitby consider Rosora to be central to the work since she parallels Segismundo's actions and also serves as Segismundo's guide, leading him to a final conversion. 27. 28. For some Rosora must be studied as part of a platonic ascent on the part of the prince. Others compare her first appearance, falling from a horse hippogriff to the plot of Ariosto's Orlando Furioso where Astolfo, the name of the character who deceives Rosora in our play, also rides the hippogriff and witnesses a prophecy of the return of the mythical Golden Age. For Frederick de Armas, Rosora hides a mythological mystery already utilized by Ariosto. When she goes to court, she takes on the name of Astraea, the goddess of chastity and justice. Astraea was the last of the immortals to leave Earth with the decline of the ages. Her return signals the return of a golden age. Many writers of the Renaissance and early modern periods use the figure of Astraea to praise the rulers of their times. It is possible that Rosora, an anagram of Aurorus, Dons, could represent the return of a golden age during the reign of Segismundo, a figure that represents King Philip IV of Spain. 29. Segismundo's Conclusions. Edit. There have been many different interpretations of the play's ending, where Segismundo condemns the rebel soldier who freed him to life imprisonment in the tower. Some have suggested that this scene is ironic that it raises questions about whether Segismundo will in fact be a just king. Others have pointed out that Calderon, who lived under the Spanish monarchy, could not have left the rebel soldier unpunished, because this would be an affront to royal authority. It is worth considering that Segismundo's transformation in the course of the play is not simply a moral awakening, but a realization of his social role as the heir to the throne, and this role requires him to act as king's act. For some, the act of punishing the rebel soldier makes him a Machiavellian prince. 30 others argue that, while this action may seem unjust, it is in keeping with his new social status as the king. Daniel L. Hapel traces a long tradition of works where treason seems to be rewarded, but the traitor or rebel is subsequently punished. 31. It may well be that, rather than intending his audience to see this action as purely right or wrong, Calderon purposefully made it ambiguous, creating an interesting tension in the play that adds to its depth. Life is a Dream, is a famous play by Spanish playwright Pedro Calderon de la Barca, written in the early 17th century. 
It's a classic example of Spanish Golden Age drama and explores themes of reality, illusion, and free will. The play tells the story of Segismundo, a prince who has been imprisoned in a tower since birth by his father, King Basilio, who believes that Segismundo's destiny will bring disaster to the kingdom. Segismundo is released from his prison and placed on the throne to test whether he will behave as a tyrant or a just ruler. He struggles with the notion of whether his experiences are real or just a dream. The central theme of the play is the philosophical exploration of the nature of reality and illusion, asking whether life itself is a dream and whether our choices are truly free or predetermined. Calderon weaves these themes into a complex narrative that also touches on issues of power, identity, and human nature. Here's a chapter-by-chapter -chapter summary of Calderon de la Barca's life as a dream. Act 1. Scene 1. The play opens with a prologue where a narrator introduces the central themes of the play, the blurred lines between reality and illusion. We learn about the prophecy that Segismundo, the son of King Basilio, will bring disaster to the kingdom. As a result, Segismundo has been imprisoned since birth. Scene 2. King Basilio decides to test the prophecy by bringing Segismundo out of his prison to see how he will behave as a ruler. Basilio disguises himself and his court to observe Segismundo's actions in the real world, hoping that the prince will act honorably. Scene 3. Segismundo, after being brought to the palace, struggles to understand his new environment and position. He is initially confused and believes that he is dreaming. He encounters various characters, including his supposed subjects, and tries to establish his authority. Scene 4. Segismundo's behavior is erratic and unpredictable. The king and his advisors are concerned that he may fulfill the prophecy and bring disaster. However, Segismundo starts to show signs of nobility and wisdom. Scene 5. Segismundo falls in love with a young woman named Rosora, who has come to the palace disguised as a man to seek revenge against the prince. Rosora is unaware of Segismundo's true identity, and he is unaware of her true purpose. Act 2. Scene 1. Segismundo is eventually returned to his prison after the king's experiment. He is devastated and struggles to reconcile his experiences with his previous life in the dungeon. He begins to question whether his time as a prince was real or just a dream. Scene 2. Rosora, still disguised, interacts with Segismundo and reveals her true identity. She explains her quest for revenge and how Segismundo's father wronged her family. This revelation deepens Segismundo's internal conflict. Scene 3. King Basilio realizes that Segismundo's return to imprisonment has only deepened his confusion and anguish. He regrets his decision and starts to question whether the experiment was just or wise. Scene 4. The play delves into philosophical discussions about the nature of reality and dreams. Characters reflect on the meaning of their experiences and the implications of their actions. Act 3. Scene 1. A rebellion breaks out in the kingdom, led by those who are discontent with the current rule. Segismundo escapes from prison and is once again thrust into a position of power. Scene 2. Segismundo's character undergoes significant development as he proves himself to be a just and noble ruler. His previous experiences and reflections help him to lead wisely. Scene 3. King Basilio reveals the truth to Segismundo about his imprisonment and the reason behind it. Segismundo forgives his father and takes on his role as the rightful prince with maturity and understanding. Scene 4. The rebellion is quelled, and Segismundo is accepted as the rightful ruler. The play concludes with the resolution of conflicts, both personal and political. Epilogue. The play ends with a reflection on the nature of life, dreams, and reality. The characters come to terms with their experiences, and the audience is left to ponder the philosophical questions raised throughout the play. Life as a Dream challenges its audience to question the nature of reality and the limits of human understanding, making it a timeless and thought-provoking work. Here's a more detailed breakdown of Life as a Dream by Pedro Calderón de la Barca. Act 1. Scene 1. The play opens with a prologue where the narrator introduces the philosophical premise of the play the idea that life may be a dream. The narrator explains the background of the story, King Basilio of Poland, influenced by a prophecy that his son Segismundo would bring disaster, has kept him imprisoned in a tower for his entire life. The king has decided to test the prophecy by bringing Segismundo out of imprisonment to see how he will react to freedom and power. Scene 2. In the palace, King Basilio is preparing for Segismundo's release. He disguises himself and his court to observe Segismundo's behavior without revealing their true identities. 
Sejismundo is brought out of his prison and is initially bewildered by the palace environment, unable to understand whether he is dreaming or awake. Scene 3. Sejismundo, now in the palace, is treated with the respect due to a prince, but he struggles with his own sense of reality. He encounters the courtiers and tries to assert his authority. Despite initial confusion and erratic behavior, Sejismundo begins to show signs of nobility and wisdom. Scene 4. Sejismundo's behavior causes concern among the king and his advisors. They fear that he may fulfill the prophecy and bring disaster. Meanwhile, Sejismundo continues to grapple with the idea of whether his experiences are real or a dream, which makes his actions unpredictable. Scene 5. Sejismundo meets Rosora, who is disguised as a man. Rosora is seeking revenge against the prince for a personal grievance and is unaware of Sejismundo's true identity. They develop a complex relationship, as Sejismundo is drawn to Rosora despite her disguise. Act 2. Scene 1. After Sejismundo's behavior becomes increasingly problematic, he is returned to prison. This return to confinement intensifies his internal conflict, as he now questions whether his previous experiences as a prince were a dream. He struggles with feelings of betrayal and confusion. Scene 2. Rosora reveals her true identity and her quest for revenge. She explains how Sejismundo's father wronged her family, adding complexity to her relationship with Sejismundo. This revelation forces Sejismundo to confront the reality of his situation and the wrongs that have been done. Scene 3. King Basilio, reflecting on the consequences of his actions, begins to regret his decision to test Sejismundo. He realizes that Sejismundo's return to imprisonment has caused him immense suffering and questions whether the experiment was just. Scene 4. The philosophical exploration of reality and illusion becomes central. Characters engage in deep discussions about the nature of existence, dreams, and the meaning of their experiences. The play challenges the audience to consider the boundaries between reality and illusion. Act 3. Scene 1. A rebellion erupts in the kingdom, and Sejismundo escapes from his prison once more. His escape is a turning point that leads him back into a position of power. Sejismundo begins to demonstrate his capability as a leader and ruler. Scene 2. Sejismundo's character evolves as he successfully navigates the challenges of leadership. His previous experiences and reflections on his identity help him to rule justly and effectively. He gains the respect of his subjects and demonstrates his worthiness as a ruler. Scene 3. King Basilio reveals the truth about Sejismundo's imprisonment and the reason behind it. Sejismundo, now mature and understanding, forgives his father and accepts his role as the rightful prince. The revelation brings resolution to the familial and political conflicts. Scene 4. With the rebellion quelled and peace restored, Sejismundo is established as the rightful king. The play concludes with the resolution of the various conflicts, and characters come to terms with their experiences. The final scenes reflect on philosophical themes introduced throughout the play. Epilogue. The epilogue reinforces the play's central theme, the question of whether life is a dream or reality. It invites the audience to reflect on the nature of existence and the boundaries between dreams and reality. The play ends on a note of philosophical contemplation, leaving the audience to ponder the nature of their own lives and experiences. Life as a Dream is a rich exploration of existential questions, blending philosophical inquiry with dramatic narrative to challenge and engage its audience. Here are the main characters of Life as a Dream and their significance within the play. 1. Sejismundo. Role the protagonist of the play. Significance. Sejismundo is the son of King Basilio and the central figure around whom the play revolves. His life is a test of the prophecy that he would bring disaster to the kingdom. Sejismundo's journey from imprisonment to the throne and his struggle to discern reality from illusion are central to the play's exploration of free will, identity, and the nature of reality. His evolution from a confused and erratic prince to a wise and just ruler symbolizes the potential for personal growth and redemption. 2. King Basilio. Role, the father of Sejismundo and the ruler of Poland. Significance. King Basilio is the architect of the central experiment in the play. He imprisons Sejismundo to prevent the prophecy from coming true, believing that Sejismundo's exposure to power and freedom might reveal his true nature. His actions and decisions drive the plot, and his regret and eventual revelation of the truth are crucial for the resolution of the play. Basilio's character embodies themes of authority, control, and the consequences of attempting to manipulate fate. 3. Rosora. Role, a noblewoman disguised as a man. 
Significance. Rosora is initially introduced as a seeker of revenge, but her character adds depth to the themes of identity and deception. Her quest for justice against the prince for wrongs committed by his father adds a personal and emotional dimension to the play. As the story progresses, her interactions with Segismundo challenge both characters' perceptions of reality and contribute to Segismundo's growth. Rosora's disguise and true identity also highlight the play's exploration of appearance versus reality. 4. Claren. Role. Rosora's servant and comic relief character. Significance. Claren provides comic relief and serves as a foil to the more serious characters. His interactions with Rosora and Segismundo add humor and levity to the play, while also contributing to the exploration of social roles and expectations. Claren's presence helps to balance the philosophical and dramatic elements of the play with moments of lightheartedness. 5. Astolfo. Role, the Duke of Muscovy and a suitor to Rosora. Significance. Astolfo's character represents the traditional romantic interest and is part of the play's subplot involving love and social ambition. His pursuit of Rosora and his interactions with Segismundo highlight the themes of social status and personal ambition. His character provides additional context for the play's exploration of personal desires and social expectations. 6. Basilio's Court Advisors. Role. Various members of the court who interact with Segismundo and observe his behavior. Significance. These characters represent the broader society and the political environment in which Segismundo must navigate. Their reactions to Segismundo's behavior and the unfolding events help to illustrate the impact of his actions on the kingdom and contribute to the play's exploration of power, authority, and legitimacy. 7. The Old Man, Solis. Role, a wise old man who offers philosophical insights. Significance. The old man provides a philosophical perspective on the nature of reality and dreams, reinforcing the play's central themes. His reflections contribute to the play's exploration of existential questions and the nature of human experience. These characters together weave a complex narrative that challenges perceptions of reality, authority, and personal identity, making life as a dream a profound and enduring work of literature. You said. Main arguments. Chat GPT said. Chat GPT. Life as a Dream is a rich and complex play that presents several main arguments and themes, often intertwining philosophical inquiries with dramatic elements. Here are the key arguments. 1. Reality versus Illusion Argument The central philosophical question of the play is whether life itself is a dream or reality. This theme is explored through Segismundo's experiences and his confusion about whether his life as a prince is real or a dream. The play suggests that the boundaries between reality and illusion are blurred and that human perception is inherently unreliable. Supporting Elements Segismundo's initial disbelief and subsequent confusion about his status, the philosophical dialogues about dreams and reality, and the play's structure itself, which creates a dream-like narrative. 2. Free Will versus Determinism Argument The play explores the tension between free will and determinism. King Basilio's attempt to control Segismundo's fate through imprisonment and his experiment questions whether individuals can truly exercise free will or if their lives are governed by predetermined destinies. Supporting Elements The prophecy about Segismundo's future, Basilio's decision to test Segismundo, and the eventual revelation that Segismundo has the capacity to choose his own path despite the constraints imposed on him. 3. Identity and Transformation Argument the play examines the nature of identity and personal transformation. Segismundo's journey from imprisonment to the throne highlights the theme of self-discovery and the potential for change. The play suggests that identity is not fixed but can evolve based on personal growth and experience. Supporting Elements Segismundo's transformation from a confused prisoner to a wise ruler, his interactions with other characters that reveal different aspects of his personality, and the resolution of his internal conflict. 4. The Nature of Power and Authority Argument Calderon examines the nature of power and its effects on individuals and society. The play explores how power is perceived, wielded, and challenged, and questions the legitimacy of authority that is based on manipulation and control. Supporting Elements King Basilio's use of power to imprison and test his son, Segismundo's handling of power when he is released, and the political dynamics involving the rebellion and Segismundo's eventual rise to the throne. 5. Justice and Forgiveness Argument The play addresses themes of justice and forgiveness, particularly in the context of familial and political relationships. 
It explores the concepts of justice in relation to personal grievances and the capacity for forgiveness and reconciliation. Supporting Elements Rosora's quest for revenge and her eventual decision to forgive, Segismundo's response to his father's actions, and the resolution of conflicts through forgiveness and understanding. 6. Social Roles and Expectations Argument Calderon explores social roles and expectations, particularly through the character of Rosora who disguises herself as a man to seek justice. The play examines how social roles are constructed and challenged and the impact of these roles on personal identity and interactions. Supporting Elements Rosora's disguise and her interactions with other characters, the social dynamics within the court, and the contrast between appearance and reality. 7. The Role of Fate and Providence Argument the play reflects on the role of fate and providence in human affairs. It questions whether individuals are subject to the whims of fate or whether they can influence their own destinies through their actions. Supporting Elements The prophecy about Segismundo's future, the king's attempts to control fate, and Segismundo's ultimate ability to shape his own destiny. These arguments are intricately woven into the play's narrative, creating a thought-provoking exploration of philosophical and existential questions through the dramatic experiences of its characters.